Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about database migrations. So let's get into it. We're basically going to cover what is a database migration and what strategies we can use to do a database migration. So for those of you who don't know this, database migrations is a bit of a hassle. It is, I would say, one of the, it's one of the few things I would say a software developer has the right to call a necessary evil. And basically what it means is that you start off with one set of data. You start off with something like a user model. And then as your company progresses and new features are added, the data that is stored in the database changes or the requirements rather on that data is going to change. You might have had certain properties you were storing at one point and then other properties that you're going to store later on. But then you need to think about backwards compatibility because if you created interfaces where sometimes you know a value is supposed to be there but because you haven't had that value all the time throughout history well then you're going to have to make a decision either that's going to have to be an optional thing that you always check is it there is it not there in a type language that's much easier i'm doing this in javascript just to kind of keep things simple but in languages there are languages that have the concept of optionals as an example which is very useful here but as you can imagine that's going to make it much harder when you write your logic because then you will have some old records that don't have the value and some new ones that have the value and the features the feature that you're working on maybe maybe that requires that that value is always there so then you're in a real pickle because you, then you have to basically throw an error if you don't have the value and you always have to check if you have the value. So, I mean, it would be much nicer if you could just always have the value. And I'm going to show you two different strategies for how to deal with this and why this can get really complicated. So here is my little express application, my little server, which uses MongoDB. And here is my app with a few endpoints. We're going to walk through all of this. You don't, yes, you don't worry. And the first thing that most people will do is something like this. So here I have a user. And when I send some data to create this user, it's a fairly straightforward process. Let's say curl HTTP colon slash slash local host 3000. And it's going to be a post and the header should be content type application. Yay, song. There we are. Some data is going to come with that. And that's going to have a name. Foo. And the age is one. That was not correct because I forgot the path. Look at that. Live coding always works. So there we are. So I've just created a user and I'm going to go over to Mongo Hub, which is an application I use to just kind of visualize the data that I just stored. It's just a Mongo, uh, Mongo client. And here is my data. So now everything's good, everything's peachy. I can get that user. And as we could see from the code here, I can go and I can just list out all those users. Super happy about that. Now, next comes my stakeholder. My product owner comes in and says, Frederick, you know what? It's great that you can store users like this, but you know what? I just remembered we should probably have their email address as well because we want to communicate with them and stuff. And the name and age doesn't really just, yeah, doesn't doesn't work anymore. And I go, okay, but uh, how are we going to deal with that? Because emails is a hard thing. And I, he goes, why, why is that a hard thing? Well, because the, we, like, we have all these users. We have one whole user in our database. And that user, I mean, we don't know what that user's email is. So we always need to have it. So we need to have some strategy for how to acquire that. And... So I show my stakeholder kind of this. Okay, so if I now go and I say something like this, I change the user model like so to be just to just include the user email like this. Well, this is now an inc inconsistent model because now I'm getting like the email and stuff and I go, where am I going to get it? And he goes, well, uh, okay, maybe we can like create some, I don't know, 
user experience where all right so the when they log in again then they can uh, we can just ask them for their email like they have to add it in order to continue using the system and stuff like that and i go yeah we can do that but it's going to take weeks of time to build that feature where we can do this and then we don't even know if they're going to use our application if the user just goes in and uses our app one time well then we're still going to have a bunch of inconsistent data in the database. And if they ever come back or like something changes, like we, if we're going to run some t type of batch job or we're going to use that data for something, it's going to blow up because everybody's going to have an email or at least everybody who's starting now. And then the people who did go through our flow, they're going to have added their email. But the people who just maybe used it once or twice, they're still going to create inconsistent data. And so my suggestion to my PO goes, well, it's like maybe we could like polyfill it maybe. We could like create some fake stuff maybe and like create a migration job or something. And he goes, yeah, sure, do that. So that's the first strategy, like a migration job. Well, let's try to do a migration job. So this is a this is an example of a very simple migration job. Okay, so what we do here is that we take the user we just grab the user model, we create a connection to our MongoDB instance, and then we run an update menu. And basically what we're gonna do is that we're gonna check for the email property, if it exists, if it doesn't, or rather if it doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, we will just create a dummy email. All right, cool. This is nice, so let's, let's do that. Let's do node migrate, and then go to our database and refresh. And there is our email now. Good. So if we just pretend now that, oh, we did this for a bunch and bunch and bunch of different users, everything's fine, right? Because now we at least have a, like, we, we know that our data model is consistent with the other records, with the ones that actually have a real email. And this is, I mean, this is a, a sort of okay solution, I suppose. But honestly, it's it's still a problem because email is one of those values that is problematic. If running a migration job is usually the best solution when you have the data yourself. If you know what the information should be, then it's perfect because then you can just occupy the data and be sure that it's working. In this scenario, I'm kind of screwed. Like this is the best thing I can do for a really bad situation because there is no way for me to know what the me email is, the real email is at this point. I I don't know what their what the user's email is and whenever if I have a cron job or something that tries to access this information on a record where I had to migrate over the data, it's still going to break. It's still not going to work. It, the only thing I'm getting here is that if there is some logic that is that may work, even if I can, that just ver validates that the email is there, it's not going to break immediately. So this is like a really horrible situation. I would even go as far as to say that maybe, like just maybe, it's actually not a good idea to run a migration job on an email. Maybe it's better to just keep it optional and then just have to deal with that forever and ever and ever, or at the very least until we can, uh, well, that's probably never going to happen. Another nice suggestion from the developer's perspective is to do the thing that the PO wanted to create a migration strategy where we ask our users for an email and have that run for a few months. And then when that is done, then we can start looking at like really old users and say something like, oh, if we send out an email campaign and says, hey, we're going to remove your account if you don't come in and update your information, then maybe that could work instead. Because that would be perfect, because then we can just say to the user that, oh, if you're not interested in our service anymore, we're just going to delete your account. And if you are interested, please come in and update. That's probably the best solution here. But short term, this is going to be a good solution as well. So my, migrating is one option. Now, the problem with migrating is that it requires you to run a live query that updates all the records in your database against a production environment, usually. And the problem with that is that if you have a high frequency system, that's not going to work or it's very likely to go wrong. This, uh, like a migration job, this is why I loved back in the day when we had downtime, when it was okay to not be up 100% of the time all the time, because then we could just pull down the server, show a very nice little screen showing that, oh, we're under construction or something like that, have the users come back at the later stage when we have run the migration job, 
and then they can access their their, their application as normal. Be the way, reason why this is so beautiful is because then there's no chance that this migration job creates an unexpected behavior. Because imagine if I'm running this job and let's pretend that it's a millions and millions of users, then this job might take hours. It might take hours for me to go through all the records. And during the time that it is executing, someone goes in and adds an email or does some update or something like that. They mess around with the data and I make a query that actually destroys their data in some fashion. Or there is some other inconsistency that happens because the users are always changing their information. That's really bad. So another approach to solving that problem is this sort of thing. So. What if because if we can't run a migration job, it becomes like re, it becomes this really horror show type of deal. And so in this scenario, let's notice something. We have changed the specifications again now, and now we want to store a first name and a last name. Well, now we have a bigger problem because the problem now isn't that we just added a property. At least when we just add a property. We just change the model and we just append it. And then, as I said, we can have an optional value or we can do something with it. But now we have taken the name, which was the old thing, and we split that up into first name and last name. OK, that that's a harder thing because now we need to think about, OK, so new records are going to have a first name and a last name, but the old records are, the records are going to have names. So how are we going to migrate that? It's kind of tricky, really. I would say. Now we're lucky in this scenario because we can make like a we can make a reasonable assumption here. We can say that okay, maybe since a name is commonly, and this is not true, almost like it's not true in general, but for this exercise, it was it's gonna have to be true. Normally, there's a first name and a last name. How can we solve this if we have something like our restriction is we cannot run a migration job. And we can't actually just add, like we, we can't just add a property like we could have name first name last name if we wanted to but we need to like somehow segment this so that it actually fits the model. Well, the user model looks like this right now. So let's just pretend like for the sake of argument that we remove this and now we want to make the this into this. Well, we probably can split on white space here we can probably we can probably take a name here and we can split that into a first name and a last name and just guess right but as i said we can't do it through a migration job because if we did it through a migration job we could I mean we could write something like that and then just do it through this but i argue what you want to do here is to have the idea of a iterative approach where you want to do a migration over time and the way that you want to do this is through something like this. So you can create a user DAO, and user DAO just stands for user data access object. And this is a very common concept in a layered architecture where you have a database layer, you have a service or business logic layer, and you have a presentation layer. Like there's many different layers. But the basic idea is that you have an abstraction on top of your database access that allows and all you do is that you trust that that thing is going to take care of accessing data for you it's the lowest level between your application code and the database so what i can do here is that whenever somebody tries to fetch their records i can go and find that user and if the user has a username well, then I can split that, create a first name and a last name, and then just go through the process of migrating this like that. I hope that, that should make sense, I hope, right? It should make sense. So that basically means that whenever a user is accessing their data, we're just iter in an iterative fashion rewriting it to like we, we, we simply change the data into the format that we want it to be because that way at least we're not in a risk of colliding with the users using our system and their and like with our migration job i hope that makes sense like the migration job is safe if we're if we can be certain that the user doesn't change anything with the records that we are migrating 
But if we're not able to be sure about that, then it's probably a better solution to just rewrite the the data to the correct format when the user is actually triggering that interaction themselves. So when we get the data, we simply rewrite it, and when we save it, we save it in the new format. So that means that we're what we call eventually consistent. So there's going to be an inconsistency in the database, but there's no impact to the application code because as soon as you fetch a record, it's going to convert it into the correct format. And whenever you save a record, you're going to save it in the right format. The thing that can be very bad here is if, let's say, that you have another system that needs to access all of this data in some type of data analytics job or something like that. Well, then that system is not going to have this rewrite logic associated with it, which means that that logic is going to have to account for that, that there could be a name. It could be a first name and a last name. It's very, this thing, guys, data consistency is hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Anywho, so let's, let's like just do a get on my record here. Let's take a record here. Let's take some ID stuff like that. And let's just fetch. Let's just get that record. Users like so. That should not work. But I think for version 2 or is it for version 3? Yeah. So Notice now that the last name is empty because I don't have a like I didn't have a two part of the name. This once again, this is the problem. Like you don't know what the name is going to be. But as you can see here now, I don't have the name property anymore, which is what I had earlier. Like I used to have a name here, but now because I accessed that endpoint through my rewrite logic, I'm left with the correct shape. Of my of my data, so that's the other way that is fairly efficient that is going to work, where we are basically just rewriting that logic into the correct shape. So, as you can see here in my endpoint, this is something you can put. You can put it in the controller function like this. I don't. I really try to push for the idea that you shouldn't put because I I feel like I need to make this a special case because the user DAO is not commonly associated with Node.js logic. And it's not commonly associated with Mongo either. Like most people, what they do is that they just use the module directly like this. But I really urge you to try to avoid this sort of pattern where you're just fetching the data like this and then just doing the rewrite in place. Instead, try to always just create a wrapper, like a layer that is just an abstraction between your code and the database connection like this, and then just isolate all this logic into this uh, to this abstraction layer because then if let's say that you have another place because this is just where the user is fetching this information but it could be that oh there's some other call somewhere or something else is going on which you know it's just going to uh, it's just going to create a situation where oh we have i don't know some uh, cron job or something that is going to read all the records and send out emails or something like that. Well, then you would have to duplicate this logic here in two places. But if you just create this abstraction layer on top of accessing the data, the rewrite logic is going to always come with you regardless of where you call it in the code. So what I want you to take away from this is number one, data migration is part of every developer's job that when you're dealing with databases. And it is one of the hardest things that you can deal with. It is uh, Data consistency is a very, very tricky, tricky, tricky problem. All I've done is to show you the two most common ways that you usually deal with this. You're either going to run a migration job, which is perfect for a slow moving system. Like if say that you have an admin tool or something like that, where people maybe log in once or twice a day, well, then you can run this job in the middle of the night and just be sure that everything gets rewritten to the shape that it should be in. One other thing to factor in here is that some data like emails and stuff like that, it's really hard to rewrite this into because you don't have the value. You don't know what the value is supposed to be. Migration jobs and like this sort of migration is usually best reserved for things where you actually know the value. You might need a much more elaborate strategy for like when you're dealing with information that the user has where you might, as I said, you might have to send them emails and remove old records, uh, old records and stuff like that. 
So doing a migration job, this is perfect if you can schedule downtime or if you can just do that and it's just a one shot, shot fire thing. It's perfect because then it keeps, it, it, it is really quick and very reliable to just run a migration job if it's possible. If you can't do that, and you're forced to do a like a kind of like a very slow migration like this, an iterative approach. Then doing something like this is a very a nice way to do it. Like whenever whenever somebody tries to access the information, you simply update the records when that happens because this becomes an atomic operation. It either works or it doesn't work when the user connects to you, right? And as a cherry on top. Instead of duplicating this rewrite logic as we usually do, as you might have done if you just follow the normal convention of using Mongoose with Node, create a DAO, create a wrapper, a service, something on top of the fetching of the database record and the persistence of that database record. That way you can isolate your rewrite code in one single place instead of having to duplicate it in all the places where you might want to access these records. Have a great day.